that's what we're doing here too. We're learning about why it's important. And as adults learn about why it's important, we now can start incorporating that with the children that we work with. Hey, yes. Do you mind if I take pictures of the slides? I'm happy to email it to you too. Oh, that'd be great. Right. Yeah, we'll just spam. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you can take photos. Yeah, you can do that too. Um, independence is another one. So families with five-year-olds at home, they looked at two groups of families. One group, these children couldn't leave home unattended to play. And so these children were living in like cities where they were in apartment buildings, they didn't have yards, there, were dan there was dangerous traffic if they tried to leave their home. And then there was another group in, in um, more of a suburban or um, rural settings um, where they could leave their home unattended and it was a safe thing for them to do. And not surprisingly, these children that are able to leave their home and, and be unattended from adults, they had increased independence. And another interesting thing that I found from this study is that um, with the group of children that had to stay confined in their home and could, could only leave with an adult, these parents actually had really high levels of um, strain in, in that they reported as parents. And you can imagine when you have to be watching your children every second, how that would create more strain. Um, conflict resolution, they did a rough and tumble study with 11 year old boys. And uh, this predicted positive interpersonal cognitive problem solving. And so um, rough and tumble play, I think still happens a lot in families, but not so much in like, groups of children that other adults are taking care of, you know, maybe as a center or a museum or so forth. Um, but really, this is a great way for children to uh, test and understand those social boundaries and work out the conflict together. If someone accidentally gets elbowed in the face, suddenly there's a conflict we need to figure out. What's too rough? What's not rough enough so that it's not rough? Social behavior, um, I'm gonna include this one with, um, I have a social one later, so I'm gonna include that later. Uh, motor skills, this seems very clear. Children are gaining skills in locomotor, stability, and also their fine motor skills, manipulatives, as they move uh, parts around that they can use and build with and be creative with. And so at our own school, this is a little zoomed in on this picture, but the kids have built this stick fort and they've constructed it mostly without adult help, a little bit here and there. And this child decided she was gonna climb on top of it. And how incredible that she's testing her own locomotion and stability by climbing on top of this fort, which wasn't really what it was designed for, but suddenly she's engaging in that risky play now. Um, you know, this wasn't actually like a randomized study or anything, but I found this paper really interesting, a theoretical framework about um, trying to understand the, the incidences and increases of mental health concerns in young children. So it's estimated that the generation now of young children have five to eight times more anxiety and depression that they did in, than they did in the 1950s. And what could this be correlated with? Well, they were making the case that we don't have the risky play that we used to have. We don't have experiences with rough and tumble and dangerous elements and disappearing and getting lost. And because when you're doing all of these, the children are having experiences making decisions, exerting their self-control, regulating their emotions, and experiencing guilt. risk perception and competence. So uh, this was an interesting intervention where they had three months with three to eight year olds where they would incorporate risky play elements, like some of these things we've mentioned as part of their day. And um, they noticed that the more that they introduced these materials, the faster children would get at perceiving the risk and uh, what their competence was at that risk competence was at that risk. So they're building on their experiences as they have more of them. 
Um, Self-determination. So this relates to problem solving, self-regulation, and engagement with materials. And so this was an observational study of 65 preschool children that were able to wander in the woods, basically, in a, a nature play space. Um, and just noted how often they were engaging in these behaviors compared with children that didn't have that natural play space to wander in. So I mentioned, um, I'm gonna actually go back to this one. Okay, so I've gone over some of these benefits of risky play. And now I want you to think back to your best childhood memory again, one that you stuck up on the pillars. And I would love to have some volunteers to tell us what that best memory was. And maybe think about um, and summarize what some of these skills that you think you were learning while you did that memory. Yeah, go ahead. So mine was when I was a few younger, pretty good, probably six or seven when we started doing it. My dad had a big garage for the wood shop in the And we would go out there and whatever scrap work he had, we would like to draw you to do whatever you wanted with it. So we got to be in a huge and building and stuff like that. But I was doing jigsaw at the time I was seven years old. So I mean, maybe not like super vivid most of the time. But, um, that benefited me greatly in many of these aspects because, like, the art and building is one of my main outlets as far as mental health goes. Okay. That's always been a thing I really did. And you mm -hmm. have your fine motor skills, and you thought it's not easy to use, but like, for a seven year old, I wouldn't do that. But um, the risk of that and confidence is like making sure that you're being safe and like we had to do the same thing that I've grown to have to do in, in an ocean restricted environment, you know, like you had to wear eyewear and all that mm -hmm. stuff too. But also being able to learn to do that and go like those tools on our own was a huge benefit in my self confidence growing up. Being yeah. able to be like, oh yeah, I think I can do this. Yeah. But it all hurts there. So all of those. All of those students. All of, those. No, all of them. Yeah. That was an incredible example. Thank you so much for sharing that. Who else would like to share? Okay. Um, I think I was a kid. My mom and her mom, my grandma, are very into foraging for wild edible plants. So they would always take me with them as a kid. So there was a very strong element of getting lost. I've definitely gotten lost in the woods multiple times with and without my family. Um, but through that, I was also learning like what plants I could eat, what plants I couldn't eat, and gaining confidence in knowing that skill, um, knowing perception of risk. Like, oh, if I jump down this ravine, like, am I going to break my leg? Probably, so I shouldn't do that. Um, just knowing the outdoors around me, where I could get hurt, where I couldn't get hurt, um, things like that. So, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. And this idea of getting lost, like you mentioned, like, I did actually get lost. Yeah. <laughs> and with children, it just has to be the feeling of being lost or hidden um, or disappearing from other people. And so we can still safely supervise the children in our care and let them have that experience of feeling. Loving. Anybody else want to share? Let's do one more. Yeah. Um, my husband and I were actually talking about like the differences of being kids who did it and who did do the kind of stuff who have he didn't like it. Um, and so like we noticed that like, oh, like I can feel a lot more confident when we're doing stuff outside and like kind of trust my body a little more and kind of understand how this stuff works. We have to be very specific about it. Mm -hmm. Um and it probably will spend that was but like cool to figure that out. Like as I kid my inner dating now um that ran like in a field behind our house and so we go and we make little bug houses and like dig out and so mm -hmm. like, now was that seemed to have thought of um, it's like oh like I know how to be on a try. I know how to um be like oh the water could be today or oh it's gonna be fast today. Mm -hmm. Um now they're not they're not much but yeah. Yeah thank you so much. And you brought up a, a really great point, which I'm going to go to next, which is about how our experiences are now informing our risk taking. And so I'm going to show you this video.